Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to One Away Dragons TV, baby. It's your host, Lemon23, aka Lemetheus, right hand of Zeus. And today's episode is all about Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the improvements, the connections, the controls, the graphics. We're going to get into everything today. And I played it on all three platforms PC, PlayStation 4, Pro, that is, and Xbox One S. We're going to get into the overview of my findings and where do I think the game is taking the franchise, being that it's a sequel to a very popular game. Now, first off, we're going to get into the Starfighter mode. The Starfighter mode consists of 24 players, 12 on 12 air battles. You got offense and defense. And the first Star Wars Battlefront, the air battles was good, man. But this game, for some reason, it pushed you more into the environment. The vehicles control very well. It's easy to jump into for the novice. And it's also, for these, these advanced players, they definitely can go out there and kick your tail. The graphics on this open level. Now, anybody seen that Rogue One when they had to defend that shield? This is the same battle, and it gives you a nice scale. It doesn't take you out of context and you feel lost at times. You know, because space battles in games, they tend to feel like you're adrift, but this, the, the environment just keeps you in tune and focus on the objectives at hand. So, I'm very impressed with that. I tried all ranges of vehicles, top fighters, X-Wings, the bombers, and yes, they definitely all have a different feel. They have different weapons, and they also have a different way that you can use them in attacks. That was definitely something I figured was a plus. The sound effects, Lord have mercy. When you hear a rocket, a, tor uh, a photon torpedo shoot by you and it misses, and you have some decent surround sound headphones on, you hear it. The, the laser blast, the explosions, everything seems to be pinpoint accurate to where it's at on the screen. Um, it's definitely, you need, you need the right guys to play with you, as in the first Star Wars Battlefront. And there is no in-game chat because Disney backs it and I guess I'll be partying up with the homies and we get into that party chat. But the scale of everything is just, it's just fantastic. Um, I have some pros and cons to the game I'm going to get into at the end of this. Next, we're going to get into Galactic Assault. 20 on 20. 40 players. Where well, you have a base and you have to be on defense and defend your base and keep the enemy from getting in your base. And this also has an authentic feel in, in the Star Wars universe. Um, the tanks are seriously, seriously strong. And you really have to coordinate to destroy them to keep these enemy forces from getting into your base. And as you win or lose, you switch sides and you get to play both sides. And I like that part because it keeps the game, keeps you on your toes and definitely gives you both sides experience. And what I've noticed listening to my surround sound, when you outside and you're shooting the layers, the lasers from your guns and the weapons and explosions, when you, the sound, it's just amazing. Now, when you go inside the buildings, which are beautiful, by the way, we're going to get into that later, the sound completely changes. It gives you an echo and feel. And for all of this stuff to be happening on the screen, exploding and things just going crazy, it's just like, wow, they put a lot of work into this. Now, we also gonna get into strike. Strike is one of my favorite modes where you have to go into the enemy's base, steal an item, and extract it. And I'm telling you, one thing that I thought was dope is the foliage on this level. It just was amazing to see a lot of things blowing in the air, the details, especially on my PC. It was just crazy in 4K. It, yo. The other two consoles pale in comparison. They pale in comparison. Now, when you get into this mode, you have to have snipers. And the sniping feels fantastic. It's almost comparable to Battlefield 1. 
that the, the sniping is just amazing in this game and the controls feel more tight than they did in the first one i felt that the star wars battlefront one it it was kind of floaty the controls but this time it's like if you that first person pinpoint accurate shooter you can be that in star wars battlefront the weapons vary and the distance on the weapons vary and everything comes into key factors but it was definitely definitely something that you have to look and fo look forward to because the control scheme is crazy get out there and try that beta it's definitely something that you would want to get into um looking at when somebody has bring in one of the heroes or villains yes they're still powerful but they're supposed to be and it it it, it takes another hero or villain to defeat them or a group of people teaming up Darth Maul is a beast I'm sorry this dude was just god damn man <laughs> I saw Darth Maul coming my way I was running for my life it was no saving it was no saving you from Darth Maul's wrath I thought that was crazy now we're gonna get into this loot crate system which is plaguing every goddamn game now you play, you get points, you unlock loot crates. They're also selling them, so we got microtransactions. But people out there that love a game, like I spent money on Halo, uh, those points and, and, and unlocking stuff. and So I understand that. Gears of War got it. Um, Overwatch has it. I know people that spend three, $400 on Overwatch. I thought that was crazy, but yeah, I know some people that did that. But loot crate system seems to be back. It seems not to be going nowhere. And um, here we go. Loot crate system, you unlock. It seems like you get some good items. But I just, I, if they're going to be implementing loot crates into games, I want them to stop being so goddamn cheap and trying to make you buy something. Just give me a goddamn uh, season pass. There's no season pass for this game, but... Loot Crate is how they're going to get their money back. And they're going to make more. Then you gonna, If you spend more than $50, then you already, they got you. Now, the good. The graphics. PlayStation 4 Pro Beta, 1296p. The Xbox is 900 to 720p. The base model PS4 is 1080p to 900p. And PC, I was straight 4K in it. Gorgeous visual. I had to stop playing on my Xbox S because I couldn't take the graphics. I mean, compared to the PlayStation 4 Pro, it don't come close. Um, it, it definitely stays at 720p longer than it stays at 900. I was not happy about that. So this footage here you see is all PlayStation. I need to record the PC because I don't think it's fair to give people a game that they're going to be like, wow, this looks amazing. Then when they get it home, they're going to be like, it don't look like that. So I took the medium range and I took the PlayStation 4 Pro captured. Um, this is running at 1080p, by the way. My capture card doesn't do 4K. Those 4K cards are crazy. Um, another thing I thought was dope to put you back into the action. You run out of ammunition. They On the sniper, you have... I don't know if it was in the other guns. I got to check that out. When you run out of ammunition, they had like a Gears of War catch a certain spot reload with those you right back into action and you can keep firing. I thought that was dope. Let me try that with another weapon and I'll get back to y'all with, with that. But when you sniping and you run out of rounds, that Gears of War little sim uh, line comes up and you got to catch it at the right spot. I thought that was sick. I thought that was great. Let's get into how the battlefield felt. It feels epic. The action is intense. There's no letting up. There's no go to get up and go get you some soda or some popcorn. You get up, you finished. You gotta stay focused. But once again, the sounds was just amazing. The controls are tighter. And it's easy to jump right in and play the game. The bad. The bad is there was a lot of jaggies on on all platforms except PC around the edges of the characters and a lot of shimmering. 
This is the beta. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying this is what it is. But it was, it was not that good in terms of that aspect. Like I said, I played on a pro, which the pro had the better resolution, so the game looked better. But the, it still had rough edges on everything. The Xbox, like I said, it mainly stayed at 720p. I thought that was just, it's not acceptable. It is not acceptable. Not today. I'm sorry. 900p would die. This game needs that Xbox One X treatment. I don't think I'll be playing this until Xbox One X drops because that's where my community's at. And 720p to 900p is just unacceptable. Another thing I had a gripe with, when a bot, when you play certain modes, let's say um, strike, certain sections of the map gets lined off and it does the same thing. It does the same thing in Galactic Assault, where the force field forces you to stay in the area, but when the battle changes, it'll throw you behind the force field and it's, and it's, and it's counting down telling you to get back into the battle. And sometimes you lost. You're like, damn, where the hell am I going to get back in the battle? So I thought that was an issue. They need to lessen that up a little bit and keep it. You know, I understand they're trying to keep you focused into the battle. But damn, don't throw me behind no force field because one thing happened. And it's like 15 of us on one side of that force field. And we all getting stuck. Not stuck, but looking for a way before we die <laughs> to get back into the action. Now. I play online, like I told you, mostly because uh, on the PlayStation, because the resolution, but also the Xbox version of this game hitched, stopped, frame rate dips, um, straight lag on EA side or live side. Or, I don't know what was going on, but each time I tried to test this game, it had a lot of, lot of lag. Now, something I saw in every version of the game except PC was texture and foliage foliage popping I just was like damn everything is popping in textures are loading I'm like wow like while you're playing you can go into a room and then the textures will just load even though like I said let me reiterate this is a beta final product I'm pretty sure they're gonna iron that out because optimization on a console is one of the best options that consoles have over PC because they can't really optimize for PCs like that. They could do the best they can, but consoles, everybody's running on basically the same console and or the same base console. So it's easier to optimize these features I'm talking about. And with the Xbox lag, I'm pretty sure they're going to patch it. Like I said, this is the beta and this is why we test it. So my overview for this game. Oh, let me get into this. Holding B or circle is how you crouch. God damn. That's annoying because they use the same button to roll. And I was tapping it at first and I'm like, damn, I'm not crouching. This game don't have crouch. You have to hold the button to crouch. And I, f I really feel they should stuck that on an R3 or L3 to crouch. Not the same button as the roll. That was truly annoying. I'm going to look into the options and see can you change it, but I doubt it. But that was another gripe I have with the game. But overall, for a sequel, it's epic. You have more to offer. And it's definitely, definitely a better game. There is no hands down that this game will be successful. It will sell millions like it did the last time. I think they're roughly about 16 million sold or some crazy number. PC owners, you're in for a treat. This 4K extravaganza was amazing. And it's definitely, definitely worth the pickup. And I'm really eager to see what they're going to do with the Xbox One X version. Um, I hope they get the PlayStation 4 Pro version up to 1440p. Um, all platforms, the game fluctuate in, in terms of frame rate. It's supposed to be 60 frames, but it's not locked. Xbox One, PlayStation, PC kept more of a steady frame rate but this game is seriously demanding and the consoles just they hovered around 50 
52, 55. But overall, like I said, the game still felt amazing. None of the frame rate dips really affected the control, which I give them kudos for that. I give them kudos over there at EA. They did a great job with that because usually when the game dips, it takes away from the control. That's all I have for you today. As always, like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're a regular, keep supporting the kid. I appreciate you. And I'm out. Cheers.